inner freedom refers to the range of possibilities for what you can experience in your inner world, as well as the capacity to use your mind and all of its faculties intentionally. In this moment, for example, you can envision a sunset. You can generate this image on purpose. And I assert that this is fundamentally different than a mental image that emerges spontaneously. In the same way, there's a difference between a regular dream and a lucid dream. There's a difference between involuntary and voluntary functioning of the mind between a volitional and volitional mental activity. Inner freedom relates to internal actions. Cognitive neuroscientist Peter Tse described internal actions in this way. There are actions that are implemented in the world and actions that are implemented internally. Shifting your attention volitionally from this page or this video to the sensation of your chair against your thighs is an example of an internally willed action. An external action is a behavior carried out through motor functioning. Behavior is the animation of our bodies, the movement of muscles to speak and act, to do anything that is observable. Internal actions are not as plain to see because your inner world is invisible to outside observers, but you can become aware of your internal world and the internal volitional acts that you exercise within it. Notice how you can direct your attention to each of your five senses. You can highlight different aspects of your experience. What are you tasting? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are you smelling? What are you feeling against your skin? You can point your attention to particular features in the field of your present moment experience. You can also take it all in with a soft multi-sensory gaze, a general monitoring of your experience. You can also tune into what you're feeling within your skin, awareness of your head, awareness of the hands, awareness of the chest, the thighs, the toes. To shift attention is an internal act. It is a way in which you're participating in your experience instead of just passively witnessing it. Along with your attention, you have many cognitive faculties that you can deliberately utilize and act upon. The application of a mental operation such as the faculty of computation, which you can use to do math, is a willful act, even if the quality of the computation is not under your direct control. You can apply effort and meditation to concentrate. You can initiate an attitude shift so that something doesn't ruin your day. You can reason. You can reinterpret situations. You can think about future plans or remember the past. You can fantasize. In this very moment, you can make the talking voice in your head say, I love you. You can make it whisper, I am beautiful. You can make it yell, I am awesome. You can generate thoughts, images, and to some degree, feelings. These and any other way you can influence a mental process are all examples of willful internal actions, of ways you exercise your inner freedom. Inner freedom doesn't necessarily mean that you have complete control over the content of your mind. It means that you are able to utilize the faculties of your mind intentionally. You inherit mental tendencies through genes and culture, and early childhood certainly leaves deep imprints. So you're not the original architect of your mind, yet your mind is not a fixed structure like a building is. I believe you can influence your own mental and emotional activity in this present moment, and you can shape the patterns of your own mind over time. This inner freedom, this agency related to the utilization of mental faculties and the generating and deliberate processing of mental activity is a type of free will. I do not believe anyone can gain complete control of their mental activity, but I also do not believe that, th that this would be desirable. You wouldn't want total control over what comes to your mind because the mind is a wellspring of creativity. You engage with your mind, you relate to your mind, and the mind relates back. You ask your mind questions like, where did I put my keys? And your mind may respond with the memory of setting your keys down. You ask your mind to think of a certain word. You ask your mind to focus on your work. You can train your mind to heed your requests and do what you want it to do. But we also want our minds to maintain a wild nature. 
so long as it does not encroach on our garden of normalcy. We want to be surprised, but not destabilized, by mental phenomena that spontaneously emerges out of the wilderness of the unconscious. Your mind is like a horse you get to ride. It's a beautiful, powerful, highly intelligent living system that will always maintain some degree of unpredictability. Yet if you're going to ride it, you want it to listen to you and to do what you ask it to do. Inner freedom is like having a horse that listens to you. It's being able to guide your mind to perform specific tasks. Sometimes the task we want it to perform is to run freely and surprise us with its creativity, but we want to be able to choose when the mind runs wild. Inner freedom comes when you have a healthy relationship with your mind. If you feed it well, it will perform better. If you train it, it will respond to your commands. If you do not imprison it, it will run majestically. And if you form a healthy relationship with it, it will listen to you. If you have a certain type of horse, you can't force it to do what it isn't designed to do. The agility of a quarter horse will always surpass that of a Clydesdale, but a Clydesdale will always be able to pull more weights. In the same way, your mind has natural preferences and talents. You may not have chosen the type of mind you inherited, and so there will always be natural limitations to what you can do with your mind, yet you can work with what you've got. And every type of mind has vast possibilities for how it can be applied. I think conversations about free will too often disregard the simple notion of freer, the fact that there are degrees of the human will. And inner freedom can increase. We cultivate greater degrees of inner freedom as we remove internal limiting conditions like anxiety, addiction, excess fear, self-sabotaging thinking. We also cultivate greater inner freedom by refining the faculties of the mind and developing internal enabling conditions, inner resources like intelligence, peace, creativity, courage, and confidence. The great Indian philosopher Jiddu Krishnamurti used to espouse freedom comes with intelligence. He was pointing out one of the most powerful inner resources we can cultivate to become freer. Greater inner freedom translates to a greater range of inner possibilities and a greater power to choose from all that is possible what to do with your mind. If you want to be able to listen intently to a lecture or to a, your friend confiding in you, you can. If you want to be able to track the plot of a novel or a show, you can. If you want to be able to memorize a poem, your well-trained horse can do that trick. If you want to be able to perform a task at work, you can direct the necessary faculties of your mind accordingly. The range of internally willed actions you can possibly perform can increase and the power you have to initiate them can increase. But what if your mind doesn't do what you want it to do? What if you were riding a horse that wouldn't listen to you? It may race on even when you ask it to slow down. It may veer right even when you draw the reins left. It may run in circles despite your cue to move forward. It may insist on running into dark, scary places when you just like to visit a pretty meadow. It may bite you, buck you, and kick you when you're down. That horse, may stand still stubbornly when you ask it to prance around and put on a creative show. In the same way, the human mind can be dangerous and uncooperative. The great American horse trainer Buck Brannaman once said about training horses, be as gentle as possible, but as firm as necessary. So bring gentleness and kindness into your relationship with your mind, understanding that your mind, like a horse, is a life of its own and will always maintain some degree of autonomy. But you are the agent within your inner world, and you can be firm, disciplined, persistent in what you're training your mind to be able to do. In your inner world, you are free to initiate intentional internal acts. Develop a relationship with your mind that is based in kindness and discipline and your mind will be yours to utilize. Having harnessed the power of an obedient yet wild mind, you can fulfill all your purposes in life. This inner freedom is an essential human freedom. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe.